get together. And uh, we are uh, literally on a countdown for launch because we intend to launch, thanks with your participation, the super course for science, the BAE Science Super Course. And we hope to be able to do it uh, with your participation, as you'll see, because ultimately it is all about communities of practice. So uh, let me go and just a quick reminder of our story so far, because I reminded Ron Laporte that the Supercourse and the library have an intertwined history. In fact, uh, uh, we both felt very strongly, from even before we knew each other, that the best outcome for the world is when the opportunities in developing countries are taken up, and that requires a quality of science education. He started at it from the health side, I started at it from the development side, dealing with agriculture and other issues. But Ron was way ahead of everybody with WHO and PAHO. He created the Global Health Network, which uh, specifically addresses epidemiology. But what we were concerned about includes inequality in access to resources. And, and I mentioned that earlier on in my introductory speech. And uh, inequality in access to equipment in many parts of the world, and we talked about that as well, and inequality of access to knowledge. In fact, this is one of the biggest issues that we have. Teachers everywhere today are more or less using PowerPoints, like the one I'm using here, but they do not have recent, correct, and easily available material. Yes, they can go on plus, yes, they can read journals, but the distillation of that knowledge uh, reviewed by an expert community of practice made available to them is not there. And therefore, if we could find a way to bridge that particular gap, the future would be much better for science education. And that was really the, the, the fundamental recognition of the need for the super course. So unlike when a university like MIT puts its own courses available, or certain professors give distance education, or other institutions give distance education in degrees. This is about empowering the teachers and the students throughout the world to be able to pick and choose from a vast database of uh, PowerPoint lectures, which are a distillation of ways of presenting the material, and they can either take the entire lecture as it is and use it in their classes, or they can pick and choose particular slides and make up their own lectures. So we're really empowering them with this material. Now this is important because I think everybody recognizes that science education, even in the United States, uh, is constantly under review for further improvement. That the minds of our children correspond to the biggest asset that any country has, and the ability to excite from early on and later on in colleges and so on, to get them to in fact think more uh, interact more with the material is going to be the key. And whether these little computers actually do fan out to the rest of the world or they use facilities that are present in the, the uh, libraries, such as the Lab of Alexandria, they will no longer be just books, but they'll have a way of getting along with that knowledge through the internet. So the super course will allow teachers to organize their own material, can take the whole lecture on individual slides, tailor the lecture to their needs, and to stay in touch in an easy and accessible fashion in the latest in science. That, of course, depends on the internet and the ability of creating a network community of practice. And once we have that, as has been now proven with the epidemiology part of the Global Health Network, it is enormous. It puts at your fingertips the global knowledge available everywhere. Expertise on what happens in medical conditions after an earthquake from Pakistan and Iran find their way to Haiti immediately thanks to this enormous revolution we work. And as I said, they can also access that material in, online in different places. So we want a global partnership. We're offering to anchor it in the uh, Biblioteca Alexandrina. And we want to expand it from the experience of global public health to the uh, 
entire science framework. Now, the super course was originally presented at the inauguration of the BA on 16th of October 2002. We had many events and many functions, but one of the most important and relevant here today is that on that day we had all these eminent presidents and queens and prime ministers and others who came. But maybe what will be remembered that was this was the launch of the super course. And we, uh, we organized the first set of lectures and gave away these DVDs. They had a thousand lectures at the time. And these thousand lectures were made available for free, provided that people who got the gift promised to give it to five more. That was also for free. That was the general idea. And since 2002, there's been a very close cooperation between the WHO Connected and Pittsburgh-based Global Health Network and the BA. And so, as the program grew, we provided, we believed, we told our, our funders that this provided a proof of concept for the more ambitious goal of expanding the, the, this approach to the entire BA science super course. Well, how has it uh, significantly expanded? Well, for one thing, the Global Health Network today uh, in epidemiology has 3,600 lectures, there are 60,000 teachers who reach 1 million students in 175 countries, and we get over 90 million hits a year on the various uh, websites that present this material around the world. So, uh, and that's all for free. So, uh, it is really an enormous effort that has been done to support these teachers, and it's working. It's working very well, thanks to the dynamism of Ron Laporte and his team. And of course, they work with, in collaboration with WHO. We are very proud that in collaboration with WHO as well, we've been able to carry this a step forward, and it's been really WHO's great contribution uh, in this last year, where the DVD is being distributed to all the deans of schools of medicine in the developing world, and uh, many of them are taking upon themselves to reproduce 500 copies, to reproduce 100 copies, to reproduce 1,000 copies, and to spread it out to the students. And so we're hoping that the DVD that I just showed you will reach 300,000 students. The four of us got together here in the Library of Alexandria last January, January 2009, and we put together the concept, we only organized the teams, and launched the uh, BA Super Course at that time. And it, we felt that the momentum was right because the year before we had had a wonderful reception thanks to Bill Oman, who was uh, the president of the AAAS, uh, at the AAAS uh, meeting in Boston, where, in fact, we, we, we met with four specialized groups, and there's been a lot of interaction with them uh, since. And, of course, we've had also very serious complications. And for those among the students who don't necessarily know, you know the famous magazine Science. It is the magazine of the AAAS. So the AAAS, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, is probably the oldest and largest public participation in science organization in the world, if I'm not mistaken. It's uh, the largest, certainly. And uh, we've had a number of publications, and the most uh, serious publication, the latest one, uh, has been uh, this one on the issues of quality control. How can you do quality control on the lectures that are available in the super course? and it's called Multilayer, the Multimetric Quality Control, and this was published in the Journal of Cancer Education. So uh, we are very proud of the fact that publications in peer-reviewed journals are proceeding at pace with uh, the uh, project as it goes forward right now. Now we've had many wonderful collaborators, and a number of them will be joining me on this uh, stage uh, in a few moments. But the key idea is that, okay, if we have done so well with the Global Health Network, how do we move beyond that? Well, we agreed with uh, our uh, financial supporters, who uh, were from Switzerland actually, the SDC, that what we should do is to start with four themes. 
And the first of these was to expand on the global health network to cover more of medicine and health and uh, deal with various aspects of that, uh, uh, several issues which can be very vast, but we will take it subtopic by subtopic as we go along. The second broad theme is agriculture, and the uh, third broad theme is environment, and the last one is engineering, and we start with IT within the domain of engineering. Well, really, not only is IT expanding our brain's reach, but uh, the entire super course is really designed to expand our brain's reach to be able to tap into so much of the other world. Why these four themes? They really are the primary interface between science and society. This is where society feels science most. Uh, they get it through health, through agriculture and food, through impact on the environment, and through engineering. Most visibly right now, of course, IT and communication. But that's where these domains are, and thus we think that we would be able, in fact, to reach wider. So, beyond the old technique of asking particular individuals to present their lectures, we've also been harvesting lectures from organizations, from individuals, and from the internet with a system of calling and filtering that creates a preliminary base from which we then reach out to the authors and get their permissions. Plus we have some special lectures that we refer to as golden lectures and uh, the, the uh, Global Health Network uh, team has been able to put together disaster response situation, JIT, just in time lectures so that you can immediately provide information to people who are confronting new situations, whether it's the H1N1 uh, uh, flu virus uh, pandemic or it is uh, a disaster such as an earthquake. Uh, the systems of quality control are essential to develop and to test right now because it is one thing to have up to 3,000 lectures, 4,000 lectures, that's already a lot of material, but you can still put your arms around it. But when you start thinking that you have 60,000, 100,000, 200,000 lectures as the topics grow, then how can you ensure the quality? How can you maintain a running control, a feedback system where the viewers participate in the rating, uh, the users participate in the rating as well as the peer review group does? The whole system is uh, a very interesting, uh, complex, multi-layered, multi-metric system that has been used in there. But to make the super course work, we will need to build communities of practice, collect the best lectures, organize them in a user-friendly way, and make them available for free, and constantly update the information. Constantly update the information. I was stunned when Professor Oman but when we were here uh, last year in 2009, pointed out that a lot of the studies that had been published between 2000 and 2003 based on uh, genomics and uh, the, um, between 2004 or 5 and then 2009 uh, had been overtaken and that in fact a lot of the so-called findings in the earlier studies were deemed not to be valid and that therefore a difference of a few years does make an enormous difference in the viability of the material. So we need to find that all the time, constantly update, constantly make it available. Now, uh, once the system grows, we are going to need new functionalities. It is one thing to look for an individual slide within 100 lectures, which is already hard enough, to find the right slide you want. But imagine if you have 60,000 lectures, which is what the database currently carries, and uh, you want to test, uh, uh, let's say, average 20 slides, uh, you're talking about 1.2 million slides. And to be able to find the six slides that you need for your lecture in 1.2 million slides uh, requires not just a, a search capability, it requires a sophisticated new set of functionalities, and luckily we've been able to do this. 
But the content must come from top flight scientific communities of practice in various disciplines. And I volunteered, and uh, it's good uh, when I see in this uh, uh, event so many of my old friends in the agricultural one that we could actually build the community of practice for the International Agricultural Network uh, pretty well. I think we know uh, most of the people to create that community of practice very quickly. Now, the thing I can tell people is that don't worry. This is not an added burden on you. Participating in this network is not an added burden. In fact, it will be a help. Largely because the lectures will come as the byproduct of your regular work as a practicing lecturing scientist. You create your own lectures to, to, to give all the time. Well, let's make sure that they find their way to the super course database that they made available for others uh, to use. And in so doing, you enrich it. And then that community of practice will, in fact, fill in the various topics. And thus, we can go ahead and really link the people who are the leaders in their disciplines in this joint effort. We're hoping that the BA will be a repository of these legacy lectures, and that these legacy lectures will, in fact, one day even have a historical value. I would love to be able to have had recorded lectures uh, of Rutherford and uh, Einstein and uh, uh, Marie Curie and uh, to be able to go back and listen to what they thought what science was like at the beginning of the 20th century. Well, we will be able to leave to future generations what science was like at the beginning of the 21st century. Because these legacy lectures we are now also studying how to incorporate videos of the actual lectures when it's available. Where it's available. And I suspect that it will increasingly become available as we go forward, looking at how now everybody is even taking videos with their mobile phones and putting them on YouTube and so on. I suspect that within five, ten years, we will have a lot more video in addition to PowerPoints. We hope, we hope that the BA will have the honor of being designated by WHO to collaborate with WHO because we consider, of course, that WHO is the mandated body globally to deal with health and medicine, and thus we would very much like to be able to work with them in a more formal fashion. Why should the VA be picked for this honor of being the repository? Well, it's a reborn library of Alexandria, and almost on the very spot of the old one, it's dedicated to science and it was born digital. It has a symbolic value, yes, but it has much more practical reasons to choose the BA. For one thing, we receive over 1.3 million visitors a year right now, and pretty soon will be 1.5 million visitors a year. As you can see, sometimes it gets quite crowded. Uh, this is a science event here. Uh, of these visitors that come annually, there are thousands and thousands of children and a lot of lectures are given here anyway, but we have at least 450, closer to 500,000 reader visits. We have many scientific conferences, many international events, in fact, all in all, over 700 events a year, of which BioVision is one every second year. Big as it is, it's counted as one event. Uh, connectivity for the VA is as good as any institution in Egypt, in fact, it is better. And our websites currently receive 350 million hits a year, so we're talking almost a million hits a day, which is a great deal of connectivity for this institution. But those of you who have had a chance to see our supercomputer, our virtual reality chambers, uh, etc., will know uh, and we know that our other project, we know that this has also one of the most advanced IT teams, ICT teams in the world. The library is a complex of library institutions that believes in the digital future and we would be proud to join the artisans of a better future. But back to the super course, uh, we really 
uh, needed to address the issue of how are we going to allow the user to deal with this rapidly expanding database? How does it become still useful? And for that, we will be launching some spectacular new functionalities to help you use it and to contribute to it. These new functionalities will really be the dawn of a new way of collaborating on lectures and using lectures. So calling Dr. Noha Adli to please come forward and uh, present the new functionalities that we hope will make available to you. Thank you very much.